a um, few things we want to touch on. Did you guys see the story I posted earlier about the black girl? She was doing a um, powerlifting competition. And she started the competition and then a judge stepped to her and they told the coach, hey, this little girl, she can't compete because she got some beads in her hair. So they said if she continues to have these beads in her hair, she's going to be disqualified. So they had to get all the other kids to go run and try to help her get the beads out of her hair. It's very humiliating from what I understand. A little girl start crying. Oh, Lord, listen, we got to, as, as a FBA family, we got to really put pressure on the political establishment. If we're going to participate in this janky ass system, they're going to have to break bread. We can't sit here and our children just daily, daily, daily suffering all types of humiliation. And we just sit here and act like that's normal. That is not normal. We got to stop going for it. We got to say, hey, if you're not going to give us some damn tangibles, all this damn suffering and targeting and, and embarrassment and harassment and everything we have to go through and our children have to go through. We do not participate in their system. They came out with that janky crown act, and I brought that crown act up because, remember, a few weeks ago, they were thumping themselves on the back, bragging about the crown act. Oh, we got the crown act. Can't discriminate based on hair. Now, when you bring this up, it's a bunch of explaining. Well, it ain't been, the crown act ain't been ratified yet. You know, it just introduced it. It ain't really been ratified. And yeah, the hell y'all bragging about it for then? And more excuses. Well, the crown act, it cover hair. It don't really cover beads and things like that. Yeah, stop. It's a never-ending plethora of laws that they're not going to enforce or they find some kind of janky loophole to not enforce it. That's why we got to just get some paper. Family, we got to get paper. We got to get proactive. This thing where they call themselves doing something for us by putting together some type of law that they ain't going to enforce. That's useless. They have no problem doing that, except if it's a federal law, like a hate crime law. Because hate crime laws, you you know, that's clearly defined to a certain degree. And, you know, you would have to judge it by the same standards you judge other federal hate crime laws, like with Asian people. If you do anything to them, that's a federal hate crime law. So they don't want to give us that. So they give us these little janky ordinances. Well, we'll the Crown Act and certain other laws, uh, The what's the, the other law they try to, not law, but bill they tried to put together talking about you can't make fake phone calls and all that. You can't call up and make false reports. But they let it happen anyway. They just don't enforce this stuff. So we have to make them get proactive with getting us some paper. We got to get paper. We got to get money and we got to stop being ashamed to say we need money from the establishment, not only just because of what they're doing to us, but we're owed that. I want us to get into the habit of understanding that we are owed, owed, owed. And right now we cannot function if we don't get the the proper resources that we need. They're funding every group under the sun, every halfway a grief group they're giving them funds left and right and then you have these democratic shields and you got to watch out for them there's a lot of these negroes that's on the democratic plantation who's pushed out here to try to shame us into voting i'm telling y'all don't vote for nothing i'm telling people to stay away from the polls if they are not giving you tangibles don't take your ass nowhere to go vote that's dumb at this point. We are better off just looking out for each other on our own recognizances. This thing where we're supporting these politicians and then they turn around and crap on us and then fund everybody else, we are enabling a system that don't work for us. And that's why they turn around and be like, hey, well, y'all voted for me. You must have wanted me to, to crap on you the way we're doing. See, we got to be very smart about this thing. I don't want to hear no Negroes running around here talking about my grandmama died so y'all can vote. None of that. No. We ain't doing symbolic nonsense no more. We got to get it. We got to get a bag. 
and we're the only group who don't get nothing. Other groups come over here, didn't put in no work. They get money and tangibles and benefits before they even set foot on soil. And we're sitting them here letting these folks shame us. Well, you got to put together a pack and then you got to get a, a lobbying committee and then you got to put together a proposal. Then y'all got to put together a committee to study and then you're going to study it for 10 years and then y'all going to have to come up with a vote and a designation. Stop. They'll keep us on this treadmill forever until we're buried. So we got to be very smart with the way we move out here. And voting ain't the lick. Don't know, don't let nobody shame you into voting. You don't need to vote for nobody if you're not getting nothing out of it. Let me get some folks in here. <clears throat> Raise your hand if you want to chop it up, family. And do we have any Democratic shills in here? Where the where the Democratic folks? Any Biden sexuals if y'all want to chime in? Because usually the Biden sexuals are somewhere lurking around. Let's get Wise Man in here. What's up, Wise Man? Wise man, turn the microphone on. Hey, monkey, how are you? Oh, it's a little the little mayonnaise man. How are you, sir? Not good. How are you? I'm good. How's everything over there in that trailer? I'm from Canada, bro. Okay, well, how's everything over there with your trailer and your moose? Pretty good. How's it going with you and the monkeys? Well, me and your mom, we're doing fine. I shaved her back earlier, so she's good. She's good. Thanks for asking. So what else is on Sweet. your mind? What else, what's, up, what's on your mind? Uh, not much. Just wanted to come in and talk to you. Say hello. There you go. What do you want to talk about, sir, besides smoking crystal meth? What else do you want to talk about? <laughs> oh, man, Tariq, you're right, bro. Actually, I do have one serious question, though. What is that, my mayonnaise encrusted friend? Um, where's the museum? Um, it's right next to the bussy factory that your dad built. What'd you and do with all the money? Um, what I did, I got your mom some laser treatment on the hair on her nipples. The hair was bothering her and she wanted me to pluck them. And I said, I get you some laser treatment. So that's where the money went, sir. Uh, you're a world-class scam artist, my man. Well, sir, you're speaking about your community. Okay. <laughs> speaking about your community, sir. Don't project, sir. Stop it. Where's the museum? Um, sir, the museum is right next to your father's dildo. Okay? <laughs> That's it's in the same place. It's in the same place, sir. All right. So anyway, I'm gonna let you go ahead and um deliver. All right, have a good night. All right, get out of here. Okay. Yeah, a little mayonnaise man. Okay, let's get some other folks on here to talk some real talk. I know. A white supremacist worrying about what we doing. All right, let's get Mark something. All right, Mark somebody. I don't know your last name, Mark. Yo, what's up, Mark? How we doing? I'm good. Are you from Canada too? Oh no, no, no. I'm a I'm another mayonnaise man, but uh, I was raised by Spanish speaking mayonnaise mayonnaise people. So okay, little Spanish with a little mayonnaise with picante sauce. There okay. you go. That's there you exactly go. right. All right, so what's on your mind? <laughs> um, also, I'm I'm flabbergasted. I'm, I can't believe you were so quick. I wish I was that quick with uh, with a motherfucker like that. But um, <laughs> um, you know, you make you make a really good point about all the bullshit, the packs, and all that all that crap that's just set up for um that are just gridlocks, so certain people can't get to the places that they need to be. Yeah. My question is, genuinely, where is it? You you say like, let's get some paper. Let's um, we need um, we need actual tangibles. We need money, right? Right. right. So right. where does the line get drawn? How much is enough? What are we talking about on an individual level? On um, you know, because I'm just thinking that. Nobody is going to be happy with with the initial amount that's given, right? And then where does it end, basically, is what I'm asking. Right. Okay. 
Well, here's the thing. Nobody's going to be happy with the existence of us. They're not happy anyway. We don't have anything that was given to us exclusively, and people are still not happy. They're never going to be happy, and I want Black folks to understand this. So let's stop worrying about the dominant society being happy. They weren't happy when we were getting out of slavery. They didn't want us out of slavery. We had to fight for that. They didn't want us to have civil rights in the 1960s. We had to fight for that. There has never been a point in this country where the dominant white society said, hey, let's stop practicing racism and do the right thing. We have always, always, always had to force them to do so against their will. So now we need tangibles because they are deliberately putting other groups on top of us in order to bury us. That was the initial intent for mass immigration in the first place in the 1800s. So now we're saying enough is enough. We need those reparation tangibles. We need to start off with $20 trillion. We start off there first, and we've already designated who it's going to, foundational black Americans. It's not going to go to all black people, just a specific group. Um, How long it will go, we'll see, but we'll just have to take care of A and B. Then we'll take care of C and D. But we got to get the A and B together. We got to get reparation tangibles for foundational black Americans, and this government has plenty of money to do so. They're already funding Ukrainians, Afghanistanians, Latinos, Eskimos. They're funding leprechauns. They're funding every damn body. They got money for everybody. But when we come up for our money, all of a sudden they pat in their pockets like they have nothing. So that's our priority right now. We're making reparations a foundational black American priority. Okay. Okay. I can dig it. Um, Now, what about um as a whole i mean i i i understand just because you know if you do go back to the roots right i mean if you know you look at it and you know african americans weren't even granted 40 acres right they weren't right. even granted their 40 acres after right that they were promised right. um and the, the, these kind of things are are the root but what where i just don't see what's what's what the 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 kind of uh the solution here is is that obviously the systemic um problems have buried african americans into ghettos and into the fringes of of uh massive urban cities right Mm -hmm. so 20 trillion dollars sure but how does that get allocated and i'm not saying that you have the answers or anything like that but how how does basically the value system change basically for a lot of people whose way of life it is to have to have grown up in in these ghettos and and grown up on the fringes of society because they were forced to be there i know that's a convoluted question but i know their way of life i don't i don't really get that what does that mean their way of life <sighs> gosh i i mean i don't know i i look at um man let's say i don't know we athletes and um and musicians um i mean we we live in a a country that's culture even though that even though it's not respected right we've turned into a culture that has put a lot of african americans on the top of that cultural pedestal right and i feel like a lot of the value system from uh, from people in those communities that have been marginalized is to look at people that have made it out. The fighters, the, the, the rappers, the, the singers, the, the NBA players, right? Um, and say, I want that and I want to um, spend my life in that or spend my money in that way. But then you also get people that don't necessarily give back i don't know i don't know you get ojs basically is what i'm saying right i'm still trying to follow you i'm just not quite following where you i i I don't get what your point there i don't really get it i just don't i just don't basically see basically it just goes back to how the 20 trillion dollars is allocated I'm not I'm not sure you don't see what 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 don't you understand about the 20 trillion what what don't you understand something something is confusing you just going to spit it out what what do you what, something's confusing you about that why why well start with um the specific black families that you were alluding to earlier who is getting right. this money oh 
foundational black Americans, people who right. can trace their lineage back to the 1870 census. What we're going to do, we'll, we're going to start something similar to a Freedmen's Bureau. After slavery, they had a Freedmen's Bureau where they would document what what who were the black people who were freed and they would understand what what resources they need needed, similar to the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Same thing. But the Bureau of Indian Affairs, they still have that going and they dissipated the Freedmen's Bureau. So it's going to be allocated similarly to the way Native American resources are allocated. Mm -hmm. They get checks every month. They get land allotments. They get land grants. They get casinos. They get tax free status. They get a whole bunch of free stuff from the government, um, as they should. And we should get the exact same thing. And more so, because we've suffered more and we built more. The, the Native Americans did not build the United States. We did. And also, many of us have aboriginal ancestry as well. So a lot of us was already on this land, but that's neither here nor there. Once we got captured and put on the plantations, we became a whole different ethnic group. Sure. So it should be allocated in that same way. Um, that $20 trillion is very, very easy to allocate that. And all we have to do is get everybody's documentation, find out who's who, and then start sending the checks out. The same way they're allocating money to all of these other groups, they allocate it to us. What about creating divisions between African Americans um, and other groups that arrived after that point? Um, you would have to ask somebody who gave a damn. <laughs> because we don't give a damn over here. Um, we're not in here trying to be kumbaya. Divisiveness don't mean anything. We're already divided. Does that? And if anybody wants to stake a claim to our ancestral debt and capitalize off of it, that means they're already divided from us anyway. That means they're not with us. If there's a black immigrant out here who really rides with us, they will say, hey, I'll support you getting yours and I'll stay out of it because this ain't for me. But if you're trying to finesse it and flip it for yourself, we're already divided and we don't need them anyway. But wouldn't you wouldn't you argue that they've also suffered at the hands of a racist system? That's a different claim, then? different claim, file a different claim. We're talking about slavery reparation. I see. Right. Oh, okay. this is, we're not trying to fix racism. OK, right. we're talking about a specific debt, which is slavery. We come from a lineage of people who built this country through slavery we're the only group who suffered that and that's who the claim is for all of the if somebody you came over here and somebody was mean to you in your taxi that's a whole different claim you don't get what we get we're not the same as far as that and also we don't want to do that because they know that will open the door for other groups to come in and say well hell i'm italian and i got called a guinea back in 19 yeah. that'll open the door for everybody so we're not even going to go that direction it's all about lineage, 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 lineage to an ethnic group, an ethnic tribe, which are foundational black Americans. That makes sense. It does. Tariq. Thank you so much. Yes, indeed. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, brother. Yeah. Peace. All right. You see how that works, guys. We got to be very clear about what we're doing out here. We got to be very, very clear about what we're doing. We got to be very clear. This is about specific tangibles for us. All of that divisive talk. Who cares? All of we you notice we keep hearing the term. What isn't that kind of divisive? We're talking business, man. This is a business deal. We're talking. Other groups when they're talking business, it's all about business. Ain't no emotions in it. Ain't no. Who do you like? Do you do you like this person? You dislike that? But none of that stuff. They're talking business with us. We all got to like somebody and we don't want to be divided. And we all got to come together. and We got to love on each other and don't make this person mad. This is not no emotional situation. We are not emotional. We're talking business. We're talking about our money. We're very serious about that. I don't want to hear none of that divisive talk. What's up, Mike? Muscle Mike, whatever your name is. Turn your microphone on. Hey, what's up, Tariq? What's going on? Where, where are you from? I'm from uh, Fort Lauderdale, actually Parkland, Florida. Oh, Parkland, Florida. That was where the shooting was, right? Exactly. There you go. And you're a white man, right? No, I'm Haitian. Okay, there you go. And what's on your mind? Nothing. I just, just wanted to say that, you know, I've been following and listening to you for a long time, and... 
you know, you did a good job, you know, articulating yourself with the gentleman who just spoke earlier about reparations. Yeah. And as a first generation Haitian American, I wanted to say that I support reparations 100 percent. Your African Americans paved the way for my family to immigrate here, for many other families to immigrate here, and through your the free economic system that American held through slavery, they're able to create America. And you know, everybody in this country, they you know, if you work, you have to get paid, and there are laws against yeah. that. So, rightfully so, you should be allocated what your ancestors deserved. And, Absolutely. You know, Haiti, of course, as you know, I saw 1804. They're the only country yeah. that actually paid back reparations for freeing themselves. They paid, you know, billions of dollars to, you know, to France yeah. for that. And that's ridiculous. But I support reparations 100 percent Even if I don't even get a penny, it's just the right thing to do. And I support black people. So. Absolutely. My uh, man, I appreciate keep, you. Keep it up. Man. Thank you. Thank you, brother. All right, let's get some more folks in here. Um, who is this? Who is Q? I think Q. Have I had you on before? Let me get. I'm gonna get Q in in a minute. All right, shout out to everybody in here. We got a lot of folks in here in the room. Everybody, raise your hand. Let me see. Uh, let's get News Brand in here. News Brand, hop on. Hop on, News Brand. Turn your microphone on, news brand. All Hello? right, y'all better get. Yeah, what's up, news brand? Hey, what's going on? Hey, I'm fi- I'm glad I finally get to talk to you. Hey, I actually, uh, my name is LC. I met you on Crenshaw, right? Uh, at that spot where you was trying to get that museum at. Yeah. If you, go, if you remember, um, yeah, that was a a, a interesting. Uh, time. Um, if you want any printing or anything like that, like uh, posters, banners, uh, t-shirts done, you know, you can um, holler at me. You know. Now you were the guy, didn't you? Um, you worked at one of those businesses yeah. right there yeah. in Lamar Park, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and I, I've been meaning to um, get in contact with you too, so you can um, holler at me, you know, because I could, you know, get t-shirts printed for you and things of that nature. So. Um, now, what's going on down there, man, as far as the people owning those properties, man? Why are they so funny style down there, man? They are really funny style about us buying that stuff yeah, down And, there. you know, like, and on top of that, like, I'm not, see, they got this whole thing going on with the council where, like, they regulating on the vendors um, Sundays and how they do things. Because before, I remember years ago, um, if you were just like an upcoming like black owned business or something, if you wanted to test your product or something, or if you like got a food business, you were just able to go over there and just set up shop at um at the park and everything and people would, you know, uh mess with your stuff. But now, you know, you have to go through the city for certain things and they came up with certain ordinances and you know, they just trying to make I heard. Things. I heard they were shutting a lot of people down from because yes, yeah, Sunday people just go out there and just start setting up and just start slinging their products left and right out right, there. Right, right. And so, they, they just yeah, they just shut that down to a certain degree. Yeah, right, right. So yeah, and uh, I I gotta thank you for uh, everything you've been teaching us because it really opened my eyes on a lot of things in California in general. Like I didn't know how uh, black. Uh, California itself is, you know, once you yeah. get deeper into the history, because I don't had, I don't had like a Jamaican friend. Like every time I post something about, you know, my people and us getting reparations, he always had something to say and everything like that. So I, yeah. I have to really like, uh, we whack a lot of people uh, out of my life, you know, due to like my um, conscious beliefs, you know. No doubt, no doubt. But we'll chop it up, man. We'll we'll chop it up, man. Thank you for the call. All right, it's Crenshaw, homie. All right, let's see who else we got here. Who is um Dark Donnie? All right, let's get Dark Donnie in here. What's up, Dark Donnie? Turn your microphone on. All right, Dark Donnie. And then we'll get King James after Dark Donnie. Dark Donnie, turn your microphone on. Um, hello. What's up, Dark Donnie? Uh, how, how are you doing tonight, sir? I am good, Dark, Dark Donnie. Now, where are you from? I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. Is this Scarface? You sound like Scarface, the Scarface guy. No, I, I don't know who that is. 
Oh, okay. But you are a white guy from Boston, right? Yes. All right. What's on your mind, Mr. Dark Don? So, um, basically, I'm a, a reformed racist. Um, oh, Lord. Here we go. Here we go. Go ahead. So, I was just kind of wondering, like, what kind of stuff I could do to maybe, like, right my wrongs with you guys. Because, like, when I was growing up, like, I used to spit on black homeless people because I knew I could get away with it because no one would believe them and stuff. And it just, like, right. keeps me alive. And it's just, like, I wonder, like, what can I do to, like, make things right with you guys and your community and specifically right. black black homeless people? Because I it, I was young. I was, you know, 15. And I would, every yeah. time I saw a black homeless man, I would just spit on them. And I had black autistic kids in school, and I would call them the N-word because I knew no one would believe them. So I just want right. to figure out how I can make this right. Well, one thing you can do, there's a couple of things you can do. Um, is there a Costco near you? Is there a Costco near you where you live? Yes. Okay, well, what you need to do is get some wholesale shampoo, a whole bunch of it, and um, get put all of that in a vat of water and and soak in it so you can get the wet dog smell off you. That's one. Then we're going to need you to get some um, fine tooth combs and um, get some shampoo. What about a KFC and, gift card? Should I give them KFC no, 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 gift no. cards? No, we're we're going to use the fine tooth comb to get some of that head lice out of your scalp. And because that head lice is jumping all over the community and we can't well, have should that. Should I get That's them boxing? Should I train them in boxing? Because you guys have been losing a lot to white people. Jake Paul beat you guys up. Tyson Fury. Oh, so, I, I, so I, the, I the fact bad. that you, you got you got to get so Jake. Much lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to pay people to take dives for Jake Paul to make you a white guy. Sounds like a whole lot of cope. Yeah, he yeah, yeah, like yeah. George Floyd and my reform yeah. race's heart felt so bad. Yeah, yeah, he's like your Rocky Marciano. They have to pay people to take dives in order he to He was looking to like Emmett weather. Till. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jake Paul is a, a fake fighter who's not fighting real fights. So, but, but it is. Do white you think you can take him? Oh, the white supremacist has always got to fake the phone. I mean, that's a part of your culture. Do, do so. you think you can take him? Um, I can take him to go get a, a wet dog smell bath. I can take him to do that, such as yourself. I can take you too, sir. To go get a nice good bath. Would you but steal anyway, his bicycle? Okay. Um, sir, um, I will steal your meth pipe. That's what I will steal, sir. I Why do you not steal, steal so much? Um, sir, we learn from you. You're the master thieves. You steal whole countries and whole communities. So we've learned from the best. Why do Which you way? guys start gangs? <laughs> sir, the biggest gang is the police. You have these white supremacist cowardly gangs in your community, and they have to ambush children because they're so pussified, sir. How does that make you feel? I don't know, dude. The guy... Slow down. I think now. it was fentanyl that killed George Floyd. What do you think? Well, sir, I think it was bullet wounds that killed those cops that Micah Johnson took out down there in Dallas, sir. So what do you think? Yeah, that's probably was. You guys are very violent. Why do you like guns so much? Um, we learn from Kyle Rittenhouse and other suspected white supremacists in your community, sir. We learn from the best. Yeah, that's pretty cool. What about Obama? How come he didn't do anything for you guys? Um, because you white supremacists would not allow him. And if he tried to do anything, you probably would have killed him the first time he did it. So, Was he uh, what you call buck broken? Um, he probably was broke broken. And that's another thing. Why do you guys, well, you, your community, what's with you guys with your homoeroticism when it comes to black yeah, people? Yeah, I was actually going to ask you, what's up with your... Oh, sir, sir, what, you, you, you like to lynch people and you take black men's genitals home and y'all like molesting kids. You're 30% of the population, but 85% of the child molesters and child predators. What's What's going on with your community, sir? What's happening with you guys? I was going to ask, what's your obsession with bussy? Why are you always talking about bussy? Because it, it, it makes suspected white supremacists, buck breakers, very uncomfortable when that word is spoken. Certain words trigger you, and that word is because triggered Because we don't like better. homosexuality like you black guys. How come 2% of blacks are homosexuals while only 1% of whites are? Uh, uh, sir, stop. America started, the Europeans turn this into a LGBT colony. Do you know so many of your forefathers were LGBT? They were escaping Europe to come over here and fondle each other and fondle their victims, sir. 
it was a big old LGBT movement. So that's what we talked about. No, they learned it from the Moors. The Moors were the ones who taught them. No, the Moors were. No, the Moors did not. Moors were the dick washers, dude. No, no, they They were. were, No, they they were not, sir. No, they were, sir. Y'all been. Have you studied your Greco-Roman history over there in Greece and Rome? Sir, have you been back to your homeland to see what was going on back in ancient history to, to look at them artifacts? We were just no, over, but I was in the third we, we were just over in Greece and they still got images of them white men bending each other over over there. Sir, yo guys, y'all got a long history of Bucci catism. Sir, come on now. Don't project on us. That's all y'all were doing over there in Europe. Y'all were getting it in with other dudes. And y'all still have that. that why, why do you keep muting me? Because I'm talking, sir. You're, you're smacking. You're over there eating some linguine or something. I don't know what you're eating, but you need to calm down. I don't want to hear you eating your your, your tuna casserole over there, sir. Whatever your, your little method out wife made for you. I don't want to hear all that smacking, sir. And it's too late for you to be eating, sir. You know, you have all of that sulfur in your system and when it gets wet that wet dog smell pops up so you know you shouldn't be eating this late <laughs> what do you Anywho. think they're recording a rap album right now stop hitting the the mute button mc yes, buck bro- broken buck okay, DJ buck, buck broken please. okay you can't even you can't even get your trolling out you're stuttering all over the place you suspected white supremacists are so inarticulate you get so many things handed to you and you cannot even speak the your mother tongue. You're just babbling all over the place with all of the meth and fentanyl and heroin that you're using over there, sir. Anyway, sir, you're getting kind of boring. Anything? Let's let's close it out. Land your plane, sir, or put your pipe down. What do you What do you want to? No, land? I'm just saying I agree with reparations, but I think we should be able to call you guys niggers. Like we should get the N word passed if we pay you the reparations. And you should do it. You should walk up. And don't do it to children because you white supremacists are very No, cowardly. I did I did I, no 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 let's stop. You know you're not you you white supremacists are cowards. When we get reparations, and not just reparations, just walk up to a group of black guys by yourself and just hurl the N-word to them and see how that works out for you. Okay. You guys do that around kids and women. That's how cowardly you white supremacist males are. That's why you love the police. The police has to do your dirty work. They have to ambush innocent black people for you because they're cowards just like you sir but do that walk up to a bunch of black dudes or just one black man and hurl the n-word and see how that works out sir anywho thank you for your call all right all right did he he bounced yeah he bounced yeah yeah, yeah. Feel free to walk up to a black person and then yell the N word. You're not gonna do that. You know, y'all only do that with women and kids. All right, we got another white supremacist up in here, Baltimore. Well, no, no, hold on. Baltimore killer. Hold on. Let's see who this person is. Baltimore killer. What's up, Baltimore killer? He got somebody with their eyes bucking on here. What's up, Baltimore? Turn your microphone on. What's up, Tariq? Oh, it's the Somalian girl. What's going on with you? I'm not Somalian. I'm from Baltimore. Oh, uh, not with that damn accent. I just um, have a really so strong Baltimore going- accent. Oh, ma'am, that is not a Baltimore accent in any sense of the word, ma'am. What part of Somalia are you from? Um, I'm from Addis Ababa. There you go. So what's on your mind? Um, I just want to talk about how reparations are never going to happen. Ma'am, don't project your failures onto us, ma'am. We're going to get reparations, and we're not going to flee like you did, ma'am. So don't project onto us, ma'am. We're not going to flee like you. Um, I didn't flee. I was born yes, here. Yes, you did. No, I, I didn't flee. My mom was born yes. here. I was born here. My dad was born here. Um, well, you fled, ma'am. That's still fleeing. Fleeing from where? Fleeing from your slums, the homelands that you turned into slums. That's where you fled from, ma'am. Listen, I know you've got a Chinese sweatshop wife, and that's why you're talking the way you are, but I did not flee from anywhere. Yes, you did, ma'am. Yes, you did. No, you... how could I flee if both my parents were born in London? Hmm? Uh, ma'am, um, because they fled. They, they fled didn't and... flee if they were born here. They fled. No, no, they, they weren't born there. 
ma'am, your family the fled. The only thing that fled was your dad out your house. That's the only no, thing that fled. Ma'am, the only thing that fled was the flies from your stomach, okay? That's the only thing that fled, and you did too. You, you know what also fled? The thought of reparations out, like anybody. And, and ma'am, and the fact that you're over in London, ma'am, worrying about our reparations shows the kind of failure you are. That's how much you failed. You were a I'm thousand. Actually, I actually you... care because reparations. I am pro reparations. I just don't think it's gonna happen. Like, but you you're not said. even. But you're not even in the United States, ma'am. So what difference does it make to you? Why are you hating from abroad? I'm not hating, Tariq. I'm just saying, like, let's be logical here. Why does it concern you and you're not even in the U.S.? It doesn't concern me because I could turn my phone off right now and I'm glad I've got money. I'm not trying to beg the government for, like, change. Then why are you worrying about what people are doing in a whole different country and you're not even in your home country, you're in London? Uh, first of all, Britain is my home country. So I am in ma'am, my home country. Ma'am, that is not your home country. That's yeah, country. but if, Tariq, if you can say America's your home country, why ma'am, I'm... that's a calm down. That's a country you fled to. That's a country your family fled to. And you, you fled from one country to another, worrying about another country, worrying about what we're doing. And ma'am, why are you not all up in the pages of the people who colonized and economically deprived your homeland? That's one thing I noticed about a lot of you tethers. You guys seem to whine a lot about Foundation of Black Americans, but you never whine or you never complain about the people who economically deprived your homeland, the people who put the sanctions on your homeland to the point where you had to flee. You never really talk about them. Why is that, ma'am? Listen, Tariq, I know you're mad because you had noodles for dinner. Okay, no, 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 ma'am. Stop babbling and talk. I know you, you over there with, with your forehead is kind of big and sweating right now. But use that forehead to think and answer the question, ma'am. Why are you never talking about the people who economically sanctioned your country to the point of complete, utter poverty and degradation? I love how you talk about my forehead when yes. you prepare me. Okay, out. okay, my forehead is beautiful. Okay, let's not go there, ma'am. My forehead is beautiful, and you look like a chocolate light bulb, okay? So we're not going to talk about foreheads. We know that your forehead is huge, okay? You look like an alien with bayangs, okay? So I know, let's I talk real. You my paper picture. You might look sexy. <clears throat> okay, ma'am, just talk real. Let's just talk real. I'm going to be real with you, Tariq. I'm not even here to, like, troll or say the same shit. Uh, you, you, are, you are, ma'am, but your trolling is failing, just like you failed in your homeland, ma'am. But go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I call you guys FBAs, failed black Americans. Okay, how about that? That's the person who failed. Because it's, it's, if you, you would have got reparations by... Ma'am, ma'am, at least we didn't flee, okay? We haven't failed to the point where we had to flee and people are falling out hungry in the damn streets like they are in your homeland, okay? At least, as long as we're not there, we're good. First of all, I keep telling you, Tariq, I know you've got like 68 IQ, I have no one fled from my family. My mom yeah. and my dad were born here, and I was born here. They fled, okay? You're not British, ma'am. You fled to Britain. You're not indigenous to Britain. You fled there. You like to play these little psychological games with yourself. You are a fleer. You are a runner. You're a track star. You took them little, little ashy feet, put them in some sandals, and got on the first thing smoking and started running, ma'am. So you can sit here and talk about you were born there. You're just an anchor, baby. You're an anchor. Baby. I don't know why you're saying this when you are literally saying that you're American. When you're not, I, bro. If you take it an answer. Ma'am, I am a foundational black American. My people have been on this land longer than anybody. Do you understand? There were black people in the North American continent before anybody. And that includes the Red Mongolian Indians. We've been here and we built the United States. There was no United States until my family built it and we never fled. Do you understand how that works, ma'am? I'm not an immigrant. I'm sorry, Cherokee King. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm not an immigrant like you, ma'am. You had to. I'm not an immigrant either. You keep saying that. You're you're an anchor. 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 Ma'am, you're a little stinky anchor baby. Okay. Your family anchored you. 
they anchored you over there because they couldn't cut it. They failed and they got the, that same failed mentality has been infused into your mindset. And you're hating on foundational black Americans because we stand up and fight for hours and we don't flee like little punk bitches. I don't know why you talk about fleeing when the only people who fleed were the niggas in the Underground Railroad, bitch. Okay, and you're saying nigga as if you're not blacker than me. Ma'am, you're black, and your forehead is big, and you're ashy, and you're up here using the N-word like you're not an N-word, too. You think you're a chocolate Caucasian, and you're not. That's why you're home. I am black. That's why I said the N-word. Yeah, Yes, ma'am, and... You have a failed homeland, and they've treated everybody in your homeland like N words. And you've done yeah, but guess what? What, what? You've done nothing about it, but fled from it. Okay, so you are running, nigga. Okay, I'm a fight, nigga, and you're a running, nigga. So we're both niggas, but niggas on a different plane in the game. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, man. I think it's funny how you think you've been in America for hundreds of years. But I have, I you, ma'am. You cannot tell me about my history. You can't tell me, nor can you tell any other foundational black American about their history when you don't even know yours and you're too ashamed of your history to stay there and relish it and fight for it. You fled your history. You have banished your history. You have no more culture. You've abandoned your culture and you're going to try to tell me about mine. Shame on I you. I haven't abandoned my culture. I've been yes, you have. several times in my life and my Somalia is doing good right now. I've never uh, ma'am, my- ma'am, you're not doing good. Y'all stop sitting up here lying. You're not doing good. You don't flee from where you're doing good. Don't sit your ass in another country talking about how good your homeland is doing and you're bouncing and y'all getting on anything you can to get the hell out of there. It is not doing good and you know it. So let's stop yeah, all the Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought Detroit was an amazing place. I apologize. Ma'am, it doesn't, Detroit is better than your homeland, okay? You don't have people falling out from hunger in Detroit. And they're not grown folks walking around with flies on them in Detroit, okay? Let's be Yeah, you like to talk about that, but what about Flint, Michigan, when you niggas have no water? Ma'am, ma'am, we got enough water to get the flies off of them. Okay. Yeah, but the floor, the, the, the water, is, the water enough, and we got go. water to them. We got water to them. But did you get fly swatters to your people? I don't know why you keep saying the fly stuff like it doesn't happen in every hot climate. Like it's no, such a tired it. joke. Stop it's it. as tired as you. You're I'm like fifty stop years it. old. The um, the um, 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 chuke. Stop it. Okay. You deal with the flies. We dealt with the water in Flint. We sent plenty of water. Why don't you send plenty of cans of raid to your homeland, ma'am? Come on, M2K. We Talk have to. water. We have no, you food. don't. We no, have you everything don't. that you want to have. And I have no, you know, ma'am, you have big stomachs, big foreheads, and a gang of flies. And you're sitting here mad and jealous about foundational black Americans. You're mad and you're hating from abroad. You don't have none of that stuff. And you're fleeing in mass. Okay. Listen, just because your wife gave you dim sum doesn't mean you can talk to me any type of way. Mm-hmm. Ma'am, ma'am, and just because your burka is musty, you cannot talk to me any kind of way. I, I, I will snatch some Febreze from your ass, so you can't spray that musty little burka of yours. So don't you play with me. Now go ahead, ma'am. Umchuke, go ahead, dear. Umchuke, you're going to have to get that iPhone 1 out of here. Okay. First of all, Tariq, you you muted me, so I can't do anything about okay. it. Second all of right. all, I don't respect. And, and, and Umchuke, I know you got that prepaid phone with them Somalian minutes on it, and you only have a few minutes left to speak. So say what's on your mind, because now you're getting boring, ma'am. Now go ahead. It's like I do I have dementia, or do you use the same insults with everybody? Like, can you not switch it up? Like, can we not get something different, Tariq? Like. I'm getting tired of the same old... And and I'm getting tired of the same old smell that you have under your little funky arms, okay? I'm getting tired of that, too. So we're both tired. So this is why I need you to get to the point, ma'am. Come on. Let's not talk about smell when I can smell the weed from here that I use for these poor people who are donating you money. I can smell the weed you're smoking right now, okay? Ma'am, I'm going to donate a bag of rice to your village that you fled from since you will not help them, Okay. I'm going to donate some rice and some injera, and I'm going to look out for the people in your village, Mchuke, because you've abandoned them, and you're sitting over there in London hating on us. How dare you, ma'am? How dare you? 
I'm going to donate some commissary money for your dad in prison in Detroit. How about that? No, then you, yeah, so what? So what even? How about that? No, ma'am, if you keep using that little potty mouth of yours, I'm going to siphon gas out of your Uber, and you're going to be stranded on the road, you and the must and the flies. So I'm going to warn you once. Anyway, thank you so much, Mchuke. You're, you're getting boring right now, and I'm going to have to let you go, dear. All right. Listen, tell your Listen, I think, ma'am, ma'am, goodbye. Go get you some deodorant and some dish powder. Anyway, let's get some other people on here. Okay. I don't want to hear them. Bless you, dear. All right. Let's get some more people in here. All right. Let's see who this is. Base Black Saiyan. All right. Let's get this person in here. Based Black Saiyan. About that last girl. I find it ironic that uh, these Africans go to their former colonist countries. So it's like almost like they have like homes. What is it? When you go running towards the abuser, uh, that's what they do. So basically they're proving that they're too inept, too stupid, and uh, too corrupt to actually run a country of their own that they have to go under their master. Um to remind them what a civilization is, because, I mean, believe me, it's been like a hundred years. I guess that Africa would have been better under colonialism than on their own. On their own, they have, basically, who needs enemies when when you have that, those people running these countries? Uh, America and, and other countries don't even need to bomb or kill them. They do it themselves. All we do is give one tribe a gun, the other tribe a gun, step back, and then killing each other. So it's just these people are backwards and they're always going to be backwards unless like the Chinese or a Western country comes and shows them how to build a road, like something as simple as that, or, you know, how to uh, get fresh water. These people are fucking idiots. You know, the average IQ in Africa is between 64 and 68, which is really like, it's um, considered retarded in the rest of the world. So when they say stuff like that, like Detroit, um, compared to she's not from Somalia, she's from Ethiopia. She said the capital. Uh, I just I can't even say. It. Um, yeah, and I mean, yeah, Ethiopia is doing good, but that's only because the Chinese are investing so heavily in um Ethiopia, and then they and now they're starting this civil war. I'm telling you, these people are just dumb. They deserve to be colonized. That's the only way to. Ever- Thank, thank you so much. My my thing is, I, if your your homeland is not popping, you know, don't don't hop on here trying to say anything about foundational Black Americans, and especially when we're talking about something that really has nothing to do with you. you you're in another country, and you ran from another country, talking about our reparations and what we're gonna get and not gonna get. See, people like to project their failure. You see, we got to This is why we have to get people out of our mix. Because a lot of people come from failed societies that they've thrown in the towel for. And then when we stand 10 toes down, because we ain't running and we're standing up doing what we're supposed to do, which is fight for ours, they want to come and infuse their failed ideologies onto us. See, that's what I have a problem with. I have a big problem with that. What the hell is that? Oh, he's watching. All right, let me raise your hand. Let me get some people in here. Let me get some folks in here. Raise your hand, family. If you want to get on, raise your hand. All right, who is um, Frank Kiso? Let's get Frank Kiso in here. All right, what's up, Frank Kiso? One, Tariq, what are you saying, bro? What's going on with Yo, you, man? Yo, uh, why you always bully Africans, bro? Lord. Now, what part of Africa are you from, buddy? I'm not from Africa. I just think that you're always bullying them, and all you do is you try and make black people fight between Now, where are you from? Calm down with your trolling. Pace your trolling. Now, you're a white man, and where are you from? Where are you from? Frank, where are you from? Where am I from? Where are you from? I'm from D.C. Not with that... Funky little accent of yours. I move around you? a lot, bro. No, no, no. Where are you? Where, where in Europe are you from? 
Okay, calm down. I don't want to hear you hawking loogies into your, your boyfriend. Where are you from in Europe? That's a European accent you have. Where are you from? Where are you from, guy? I've been around a lot. Why do you want to talk about where I'm from and not what I asked you? Okay, why are you so ashamed to admit where you're from? Why do you just want to find out where I'm from? I asked you a question. Okay. Are you ashamed of the European slum you came from? Is that what it is? Tariq, what's your deal, bro? Are you just trying to like have weird beefs on the internet? Uh, sir, why are you so ashamed? I'm like you have hearing, nothing so to I'm, offer. I, I'm hearing some Canadian thing in there too. I'm, I'm almost hearing a Canadian accent. It's a, a little funky little accent you got that you you try to hide, but it's it's coming out. Yeah, you one of these little four chan trolls who sit around whining about black folks, and you come from a slum somewhere in Europe where you eat <clears throat> beans and hot dogs. Now, where are you from? Stop being ashamed. Where are you from? <clears throat> Okay, then Stan, you, you're grunting and you, 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 hey, you calm down with the grunting, man. Do you have COVID? What's wrong with you? Yeah, damn. And that's, See, another, like- and that's, and that's another thing, y'all. And, and this is something else, family. A lot of these folks from these European slums, they have all types of diseases. They try to make it seem like black folks are diseased. These folks have all types of ailments and diseases in these European countries big time that they don't tell you about in the media. You can hear this guy wheezing and huffing over here. No telling what he got. So this is why I don't... We got to watch some of these guys coming from these European slums, bringing them um, weird diseases over. That's where a lot of these weird diseases come from. This dude has the mayonnaise flu or something. What's what's on your mind, man? Yeah, so, bro, like, all you do is tell bad racist jokes and you don't offer black people anything. Like, what's your problem? So what do you offer the white community? Bro, what the fuck are you even talking about? What do I offer the white community? You're supposed to be helping black people, and all you're doing is is like bullying other black people in the and internet. You're, and, and you're it's fucking retarded. You're fucking. And, and you're supposed to be helping your white brethren. What are you doing for the white community, sir? Besides smelling up the room with wet dog scent, what are you doing for your community? Are you just upset that you never became a rapper? Like what's? Sir, I am a rapper. I can rap now. I can freestyle right now. All right. One, two, three, four. A little mayonnaise man came through the dough. I spit these rhymes. I'm twice as nice. He combed his hair. It was full of lice and the lice fell all on my arm. I said, God damn, I'm going to do you harm. I can spit, man. Let's not play games. (laughs) That was ass, bro. Oh, my God. That was such trash. That Ooh. that was hot. That was hot. <laughs> you know. Bro, are you kidding me? That was fucking embarrassing. That like, that was that was hot fire. And what you're gonna probably do is repeat it and get a Grammy, like other white people. You're gonna steal it and go get a Grammy with it. Okay, so, bro, this uh, is embarrassing for you. This is very embarrassing <laughs> for you right now. You look sir, like a retard. Sir, stop it. Now, what's on your mind, little mayonnaise man? Besides, because, are you whining to Black Daddy? You have, because all you do is try to bully other black people on the internet. Like, everyone knows you're fake. Everyone, Stop it. Okay. You, you don't even sound like you're in the United States. You sound like you're somewhere hating from abroad. Uh, another guy somewhere hating from a foreign country. Um, you need to be fixing... How much money you stole from black people at this point, Tariq? And, and how much crystal meth have you stole from your community? Okay. Oh, yeah. So because because I you imagine I do crystal meth. So it doesn't matter how much money you steal from black people. Is that what you're saying? Because you're you're such a fucking you're projecting. Calm down, little sensitive man. You're very sensitive and dainty. Calm down. Calm your little ass down. Worrying about black problems. You got other problems you need to worry about, like that birth rate of yours. Okay, what you going to do about that birth rate? Because you about to you white supremacists are going extinct. That's what you need to be worrying about. Don't worry about black daddy. Okay. I'm kind of bored of you, Tariq. I might duck out, to be honest. You're not that fun. You're not that funny. Okay, so you sound like you're somewhere on 90 Day Fiance trying to marry somebody to get your ass over to where I'm from. You're trying to get to my country. You don't sound like you're in the U.S. You sound like one of them simps on 90 Day Fiance who's trying to get them a little finesse game going on. And that's why you keep projecting about scams. Whenever I hear people doing these weird projections... That's usually somebody who's a scammer themselves. And that's what you sound like. You sound like a, 
a mail order bussy bride. Sound like you're trying to find you a an American man. Like, do you think this is funny? Uh, you you sound like you're trying to find an American man to come over here and get a green card with. Yeah, you sound like you're trying to finesse. Okay. No anyway. one's listening. You're such a washed up little bitch. Jesus, bro. Okay. Fucking hell. And, and, and so I had to get you out. Your insults with one of them moist European accents, it doesn't sound gangster at all. You're such a washed up bitch. That's the least gangster sounding insult. With that little moist European accent. Fucking I, you're such a washed up bitch. <laughs> you sound like you're drinking some tea with crumpets, nigga. That was so not gangster. All right. You sound real sassy. You're such a washed up bitch. <laughs> Dude. You are so not gangster, my dude. Anyway, let's get some other people in here. All right. We got a little mad mayonnaise men in here. All right. Raise your hand, family. Let's get, um, let me see. Y'all want to get on here? Raise your hand. All right. Who's this person here? Let's get in abundance. All right. Let's get in abundance in here. And more we in here deep. What's up, in abundance? What's up, big bro? Uh, I'm out here, AZ, man, Arizona. Yeah, man, we're just out there. What part of Arizona are you Phoenix, in? Phoenix, big dog. No doubt, no doubt. Um, we went to Lolo's out there. Lolo's, Lolo's so chicken. Food. Yep. Yeah. And it got the big old uh, Kobe Payton on the side. I don't know if you've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, I think we did. I think because there, there's two locations there, right? There's one like in Scottsdale and one like in the heart of downtown, right next to like a bunch of construction. Okay, I don't know which one you went to, but uh, all right. Well, what's on your mind? Okay, bro. Uh, I'm from South Sudan, man, the heart of Africa. You know what I'm saying? But I respect and I I support condone the FBA, um, rise to the top, the reparations, everything, man. What and that's another thing. We saw a lot of African folks in in Phoenix. What was up with that? There's a lot of Africans out here. See, it's a lot of um Ethiopians, um Somalians, them type, even Nigerians, West West uh, Africa. Yeah, we saw that. We saw it. Yeah. Yeah. So I had a question though, bro. So I had a few, but I just, it's really one that's really on my mind. So originally, you know, I'm from South Sudan, but I grew up in the South, born and raised in the South, Memphis, Tennessee. And I grew up yeah. around the Nashville area, um, specifically some of the county. I'm not know. I'm not sure if you were familiar with that area, but uh, from some of the county, there's a guy in the 1800s named Isaac Franklin. He owned a lot of land. He was one of the biggest uh, slave plantation owners down south. Isaac Franklin. He his his uh money, his fortune, it ended up building in Golden State Prison. Um. In Louisiana, yep, right? down in Louisiana. So his family, they own. After he died, his wife bought land in uh, Texas, Louisiana, and other parts of Tennessee. Um, some of his fortune was used to build a uh, Belmont State University. It's a private college down in Nashville. I was just wondering if you could speak on that. You know what I'm saying? It's really messed up. I got family that still live down there. They're very ignorant to the history. And like I said, I'm very like I'm very knowledgeable about a lot of a lot of history, even from the FBA, even to the African side, and I respect what you got going on and what lineage. I grew up around FBA, so, like, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm down for the cause, man, so I just, I just wondered if you, you know, if you could speak on Isaac Franklin, because I think that's a big a big part of down south history, you know what I'm saying? Oh, all right, thank you, bro. I, I, he's just a regular slave owner. He's just a regular white supremacist. That's it. There's nothing really to speak on. It was nothing unusual about him. He's just another run-of-the-mill white supremacist who owned a bunch of black people. And he got wealthy and started building a bunch of other stuff, which is what all of them did. So, yeah, th this is the thing. Just finding out these individual slave owners, all of them were using the same playbook. They got a bunch of black people to do the work for them, enslaved them. And the federal government assisted them and locked us into slavery. See, that's who we need to be looking at. Uh, Isaac Franklin is just one of many. I'm looking at the federal government because it was the federal government that protected Isaac Franklin in subjugating us. That's where we're owed. 
we can sit up and point to all the wealth that these pay- people made. All of them made a gang of money. And the government made money off of them making money off of us. See, that's what we have to look at. We always got to keep our eyes on the prize. Let's get FBA Becky. Let's get FBA Becky in here. Turn your microphone on, FBA Becky. Oh, she got out of here. Oh. Uh, FBA Becky was raising the hand and then she bounced. All right, let's get um Crino. Let's get Crino in here. Crino, get in here. And turn your microphone on, Crino. All right. Hello. All right. What's up, Crino? All right, so I, I, I literally have no idea what's going on. I'm from South Dakota, so I've seen like five black people my whole life. So, uh, oh, okay. so like, what's your deal? What are you doing on here? I haven't been in here very long. Okay. Well, why'd you come in here if you didn't know what the deal was? Because I saw it. I saw the, the Dark Dawn. He posted it. So I'm like, maybe he'll come check it out. And then he was trolling. And then I saw you were kind of spitting facts. So I decided to stay in. Okay. All right. So what's going on out there in South Dakota? Not really anything. We're just kind of keeping trans people out of sports. All that, that strange stuff. Like, going a little hard into that instead of like things that actually matter. Oh, okay. Now, how old are you, man? You sound very young. How old are I you? am. I'm 17 years old. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, you're the Kyle Rittenhouse age. Okay, don't don't get no gun. All right? Don't, All don't right. get a gun. All right. But yeah, we're just in here talking about black people stuff. All right? We're talking about black people issues and black people things. Okay? And you said you've only seen five black people in your life out there in South Dakota. Um, it's time for you to get out of South Dakota. There ain't nothing popping in South Dakota like that. No, what do your parents no. do? They do like uh, welding stuff, so that's not really anything. You do that Are anyway. you guys, guys connected to any of the Native American tribes out there? Yeah, a little bit. But like not, not anything serious. Like we're just like a little bit, you know. So do y'all get some money? No, nothing like that. Like not, we're not that close. No. Oh, so you do you have some five dollar Indians in your family? Do y'all claim like one thirty fifth Cherokee or some shit like that? Yeah, like I think I'm like a sixteenth or like a thirty second or something like that. Oh Lord. <laughs> uh, fun fact, no you're not. Your ass is all European. Somebody in your family paid five dollars about fifty, sixty years ago to get on the Indian rolls. Nobody in your family's Native American, sir. I believe it. There you go. All right, man. Thank you for the call. <laughs> hey, they know. They know good and well. They ain't no damn Native American. When they start talking, I'm, I'm South Dakota, 145th Native American. No, you're not. You're right, dude. They know. They know. There's so many fake-ass $5 Indians out here faking the funk. That's why they don't mind giving the Native American tribe something because see, the white supremacists know that they can finesse their way on the Indian rolls. They've already finessed their way on there. And finessed us off of them. That's the that's the trick bag family. You have the Walter Pleckers out here taking us out of the Native American roles and the Native American I- identities, and they were putting themselves on those Indian roles by paying five dollars under the table. It's a very very interesting situation. All right, let's see who we got in here. A lot of folks, raise your hand. All right, uh, raise your hand, guys. Raise your hand. Uh, let's see who we got. We got um, Tevant, and then uh, then we'll get uh, King. Uh, where's King James? I thought I had John here, King James. All right, King James and Tevant. Tevant first. Tevant first. Let me get Tevant first. What's up, Tevant? The song the dude made? What what dude? What are you talking about? Uh, uh let let the white kids say nigga. Uh,
know, just chopping off heads on the island and going from different islands and basically getting the work done and freeing, you know, other black people and other other places and going to different places and, you know, putting in work over there. What exactly happened? Like, how come they couldn't keep the momentum? You know, because it looked like it looked like they could have been just been a powerhouse till today. What what exactly happened? Great question. Let me tell you what happened. When you free yourself and you become an independent autonomous group, you have to work harder in order to maintain your autonomy and your independence. And that's something that a lot of people then did not want to do. And truth be told, a lot of folks don't want to do it now. When they got rid of all the white supremacists, then Dessaline and those folks told the people, hey, look, now we have to put in real, real work, but we have to work for ourselves. So now it ain't going to be everybody working and making the French rich. We all have to get up here. We have to build our society and our economy. We all have to chip in. And they were making people contribute. They built the Citadel out there in, in Haiti, a phenomenal structure up there on a mountain in Haiti. Um, great architecture work, but they made people get involved and start building to protect the island as they should. So you had people like, well, damn, we just got off a plantation. We just, we want to chill. We want to kind of kick back. So they started killing some of the Haitian leaders. They killed Dessalines and some of the others, Henry Christoph. They killed him because they didn't want to get out here and do the work. And they sabotaged some of the people. And then when France came in and said, OK, look, we're going to invade you again if you don't pay us. So then they had to start paying off France. But what really got them was the infighting, the people who didn't want to get out here and put in the real work to start building. And see, that's where when we talk about us being independent here and not depending on the white supremacists, meaning all of us got to put in work. We have to understand a lot of folks don't want to do that. A lot of niggas are just comfortable with their little nine to five job, having white mommy, white daddy tell them what to do, give them their little bullshit minimum wage, and that's it. When white mommy and white daddy are off the picture, we got to start building for real, for real, all day, every day. And a lot of black folks ain't ready for that. So that's a conversation we really need to be having. Are we really ready to start running things? Because when we're running things, it ain't going to be no more sitting around smoking no damn weed. It ain't going to be no gossiping on TikTok and Twitter all day. Ain't going to be no twerking on Facebook and Twitter. You understand? When we're independent, all of that shit is going to go by the wayside. So we have to be very serious. How badly do we want independence? Because if we get independence, we're going to have to like we're going to have to act like an independent nation. And a lot of folks are really scared of that. You understand? OK, I feel you. Yeah, it, it makes sense, too, because I remember one time I was listening to your live stream and you was talking about uh, hypothetically, if the white supremacists weren't around, could we run the power plants? Can we control right. the electricity, the water? You know, how can we uh, produce our own food? So I feel you, man. Thank you so much, Tariq. No doubt. Yeah. See, these are conversations we got to have. Let's say the white supremacists just for some reason, unfortunately, they died out or. They all died out tomorrow. Well, whatever. I won't say fortunately or unfortunately. That if all the white supremacists are gone, that's a good thing because we don't need white supremacy. But let's say none were here. They ain't running nothing. And it's just us here. We got to start running these dams that they have out here. We got to start controlling these water supplies, these water treatment centers. Are we going to be running these sewage systems these waste management systems, these power grids. Are we going to be able to keep these satellites in the in orbit? You understand? So we got to play a lot of catch up out here. See, this is what we got to be on. Are we going to be able to run a media apparatus, uh, an international multimedia apparatus? Are we going to be able to utilize these satellites for the maintenance of the GPS systems that we have? Are we going to be able to utilize these satellites for the maintenance of the Internet services and these 5G towers? Are we going to be able to maintain the atomic clocks that's centered around the world? We have to start looking in terms of that, running a world environment. You understand? We got to start thinking big, ladies and gentlemen. We got to start thinking real big. Are we going to maintain the crops and the agriculture? Are we going to maintain the animals and the, the livestock? And we have to look at all of that stuff and start thinking in terms of doing that. You understand?
that's where our mindset has to be. All right. We got a lot of folks in here. I think I'm going to close it out right now on that. That was a good close out. But look, I appreciate everybody for tuning in. We had a nice late night chop up session. Y'all go get my book on Amazon, Foundational Black American Race Beta, available on Amazon right now, ladies and gentlemen. And um, go to officialfba.com. And remember, later on this year, we're going to have the first Foundational Black American holiday that we're going to celebrate called the Retisase that's celebrated and created specifically with Foundational Black Americans in mind. Talking about our foundational Black American culture, December 24th is when we're going to celebrate a retisesse, meaning a rise in the foundational Black American Tut language. Um, when people talk about Black holidays, they give us Kwanzaa, but a lot of Black people are not connected to Kwanzaa because it has a lot of African themes, and a lot of us just don't have those cultural connections. That's why Kwanzaa never really took off the way it did. But we're going to get our own thing popping. A and remember, that's going to be popping this winter. So we got to be on board with that and be ready for that. Other than that, man, y'all be good. Papi Akute and Lola Vuve to the family. <laughs>